Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Football Filling. We have got goalkeeper coach on today's show, so we're going to be talking all things goalkeeper. Nick Pope. Oh, mate, mate, I'm so sorry for you. I'm heartbroken. It's kind of comedic, but I'm so sorry for you. Honestly, I am. David De Gea, couple world he says that Ilian, Ilian Melier kind of... Did he mean it? Anyway, we'll break it down. Come on, let's have it. All right, lads. Um, another action-packed weekend, as per usual. We're going to start it off at Villa Park, though. Uh, Neil, we're going to come to you. By the way, Mark's here, by the way, as usual. I didn't mention him in the in the intro, but Mark Goldbridge is here, as per usual. We do love you, Mark. Um, but we're going to start with you, Cuts, because you were actually at this game. Yeah. Uh, Aston Villa, Arsenal, 4-2 to Arsenal. Big win for Arsenal. What That's was the game like? Um, a bit basketball-y, you know, a bit open. You attack, we attack. Carnage. Absolute carnage, oh. but some unbelievable... What a game. Yeah. Like, probably the best game I've seen all season. Like, some great goals. But it's just like, if you're Arsenal, you want to win the league, you can't be a basketball team, can yeah, you? Yeah, you can't, yeah. like, you can't concede goals like that. And they were so open on the counter. So, unbelievable game, though. What a game. Um, we're going to talk... We're, I want to talk about, like, the goals and how it all went and all this kind of stuff. But um, the thing that really annoyed me after the game, right? I mean, it, I was fuming. So... It's, it's 98th minute or whatever it is, all right? Emmy Martinez goes up for a corner. What's your opinion on goalies going up for corners? Uh, well, I'd be interested to see what you two say. I mean, look, I'm, I'm old school. Schmeichel used to do it all the time. I suppose from a fan point of view and not a goalkeeping point of view, I, I, it just creates a bit of chaos, doesn't it? You know, the, Do you want to say it? Do you want to say it, though? You know, it's a bit like being on the dance floor with professional dancers and then you go on with 10 <laughs> pints. It, it just ruins it all, doesn't it? And it might just put somebody off. I don't, so, I mean, I think if, I'm all for it if it just creates a bit of chaos and then someone mm. can benefit I don't think the goal is there to, to, to Me, score necessarily a score yeah. yeah like yeah I'm with you a bit so anyway um, after the game so obviously in 98th minute he goes up for the corner they break they score 4-2 it finishes right but the bit that really annoyed me Neil is Unai Emery after the game does his interview like all that kind of and he says um no, I didn't want him to go up for the corner. Um, that's never in my game plan. And he knows now for the rest of his career that he shouldn't do that. That is, that's outrageous, isn't it? I find it, and I don't want to talk out of place, can't talk out of place, but I find it really strange because as coaching staff, when you look and you see a goalie walking from his 18-yard box, yeah. coming up to the opposition... You know what's happening. You tell him not to. If you don't exactly want him to go, that. you tell him not to go and you can get that signal on. And then to come out afterwards and say, you know, I didn't want him to go up and he's this and he's that and the other and I'm disappointed. And I think he's made a massive like play on it, Think which it, is, yeah. why didn't he just, why don't leave that in the dressing room and say, look, you know, I'm not happy with it. Don't do it again. And then yeah. it's finished. But all now it's like, it's everywhere, you know, like I'm disappointed. I'm this, I'm that and the other. And like I say, if my goalie, I'm sitting on the bench and my goalie's going up, I'm asking the manager, do you want him up? Yeah. And if you're saying no, I'm getting him back. Exactly that. It's like it's like, it's like like me on a Saturday night when we're putting Netflix on and the wife puts on a, like a rom-con on and I sit there and watch it all and then she goes, did you enjoy it? No, I wanted to watch The Bourne Identity. <laughs> well, you should have said it at <laughs> the start. It's, it's right. not hard to go, I don't want to watch exactly this. Exactly right, 100%. Your little things are incredible, by the way. Absolutely buzzful. Um, but no, I'm, there, I'm with you, mate. When, like, as a goalie, I went up for a few corners, mate. I yeah. did. I would go up for quite a few corners, right? And I know deep down that I probably shouldn't be doing this because it's not my forte do you know what I mean I've gotten the end of a few of them by the way um, but when I'm going up I'm looking at the manager I am I'm looking and I'll be going yeah and sometimes like Tony Pulis would either give me a yeah go on or he'll be a no piss off get back whatever kind but of. like you say it causes chaos yeah, they might have, chaos, like, a big yeah. one might have to mark Amy now he's 6 foot 5 he's coming in the box Four, right? a big one might have to mark him Yeah. it's not just that it's like the, the way Arsenal countered off the back of it, he should have been taken out. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Like, it's just allowed easy. him to come up the pitch, like, and nothing was said about that. Yeah, it's sloppy, like, wasn't it? Yeah. You're not going to get sent off. Take him out, like, there was in the no energy off. When it broke to the edge of the box from Villa, was it? No. It was sort of like, oh, that's not worked. And four, what, 4 2 3 2, it's not like. Exactly right. And exactly. and some of the goals defensively weren't great. Yeah. They weren't highlighted. It was just Emmy. Things. So the big That's thing it, is yeah. Emmy. It is. So yeah. it's like just I don't know the whether there's Cup. something there or there's yeah. a bit of annoyance or something that he's not quite happy with with Emmy. I'm not sure. I don't know. But to come out and, and to dig him out like that was a bit was a bit I found a bit strange. Yeah, I didn't like it. I think like, we obviously heard a few murmurings after the World Cup that he wasn't happy with his antics and the celebrating and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It seems like he does just have a little bit of a bee in his bonnet yeah. about it. Spoke him, about this before, I think. The other lads that came back to their to their clubs, they were treated like you know this is a massive thing. Yeah. You know, guards of honor. Like I saw, I saw that together. McAllister at Brighton just yeah. see, like walked in, they're all like celebrating yeah. and all that kind of and stuff. I don't think Emmy like 
I just think he just walked in. Really? Mm. And I found that no a bit strange. I found it a bit odd. Well, a Villa World Cup winner is not a, is a rarity, isn't it? As well, quite yeah. Yeah. often. Yeah. yeah, he's a big player for them, and I just found it a bit a bit strange. Um, talk to me about the game, though. Massive, massive win for Arsenal, wasn't it? Because if they lose that after off the back of their recent results as well, that is a problem, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think I think Arsenal is this, this this sort of like tradition that they're bottlers, but I think it's so unfair because whatever happens this season, they've exceeded their own expectations, and certainly as an outsider looking in. I think the Man City loss on Wednesday was huge, but also obviously the Everton and the, the Brentford results. So to go to Villa, a good good side Villa, yeah. and um, be two, also be behind twice and still win it four two, I think that that result, in a way, they'll sort of say they'll say we'll take that rather than you know maybe getting a draw against Man City because it's like. United had it a few weeks ago when we were 2 0 down to Palace and you're down to 10 men. Those 20 minutes where you hold out, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the, the, how that team will feel now, you know, they've come up, they've, they've faced issues, been written off, and then they've sort of they've got that scene. They mentality. look like they've got together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, they I think came out second it. half early. Yeah, and they had did a they? Group hug, and you could see like a real togetherness. Like, no, it, it, Rambo gets some. Of like, course he does. He gets them right gets going. Them right I just love the celebrating I did when that fourth goal went in, and it was yeah. finally like everybody on the side hugging Arteta, everybody in there. I just thought, oh, that's a yeah, that's a big result for them. They'll buzz off that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to take it. There's another goalkeeping thing coming up. I've got to talk about it. Liverpool, Newcastle, Newcastle, Liverpool. Should, should I say? Um, how how sorry do you feel for Nick Pope in this one? Well, yeah, Come on, he's been unbelievable oh. as well. Like clean sheets, left, right, and centre. He's been so consistent. And this is a massive game for him. It is, it's isn't like, it? Oh, God. Like When he fell over, he, he just didn't need to claw at the ball again, no, did he? Just like, let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> but it's just a natural reaction. Should he? Because I've seen keepers before who come out like that and they leave their arms behind them. What, yeah. like, head it? do that because sort of head? He's a Superman, so it's sort of like he's got to get the head very straight, hasn't he, to avoid his... But I don't know why he tried to head it in It's, the first it's a horrible place. diving yeah. header. Why are you trying yeah. to head it? Yeah. He sort of dives like Superman, yeah. doesn't he? And it's like, he does head it, but then he catches it as well. It was awkward and it was you know I, I feel so sorry for him because it's a massive I know massive game I was him. watching it and like I said I, I, I don't mean to laugh at it but when I was watching him doing it I'm thinking oh no Nick what you doing lad what you doing and that bit where it, as soon as it touches his hands yeah it must just be the most natural thing in the world for a goalie to just go that's yeah. mine yeah. Yeah. and he just pulled it in <laughs> so, didn't he but so with Karius as well it looks like Karius is going to play and yeah a lot of the pundits like digging him out like quite disrespectfully yeah and you're thinking give the boy a chance of course you know, yeah He's played in the Premier League. Yeah. He's not going to be just like, completely rubbish. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or like he's had he's had iffy times and his, his career's gone a bit up and down. But give the boy a chance. Yeah. What do you think, Matt, for um, Nick Pope not being available for that Carabao Cup final? I think it's now? massive because they've got a fantastic defence. But uh, I agree with what you're saying about Carrius because we had Depravka on loan, funnily enough, and he couldn't kick the ball. Yeah. When he played at Old Trafford, it was nervous. So I imagine as a goalkeeper, if you've got this massive game and then people are already digging you out. It's well, not, don't you, need you know, that. If you're a Newcastle fan, you need to be sort of like giving him a bit of love and, mm. and a, because it, there's nowhere else to go. But yeah, Nick Pope's a big loss, but it is a red card, 100%. And, is, and the yeah. rules are... I mean, I almost think that, you know, Gamera should be missing it because he got a red card in the semi-final yeah. and Pope should be serving it in Premier League games. Mm. But yeah, exactly. It's weird, isn't it, how you go... You know, you, you you get sent off in the Premier League, but you miss a cup final. I know, yeah. Just miss the next it should Premier just League be, yeah, like... just for that, yeah. Um, talk to me about the game, though. Liverpool looked decent, didn't they? Back to Liverpool, counter-attacking. Yeah, I want to shout... I can't pronounce his name. Is it Biatic in, in the midfield? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, young lad. I mean, he... I don't know where he's come from, and Liverpool's midfield has been really poor this season, but he looks fantastic, and... Um, you know, for 18 years of age, I think that they, they need to buy a Bellingham or someone like that. But I think they've unearthed a fantastic yeah, player there. Little gem. Real standout. But they're still vulnerable, Liverpool. Yeah. Um, um, but the goals they scored, especially for the two players, Gakpo and Nunez, who've been a bit highlighted as maybe flops, which I don't think they are. I just think if, if they're, they're a flop, then Salah's a flop this year. They've all been bad. Mm. But it, they needed to win. I think it puts them six points behind Newcastle. Yeah, the the, I wouldn't count them out, Huge you know. Huge win. Well, we've got this bet, and we I think have, it's back yeah. on again now. I think it's back on as well. If I they, don't think it is. Do you not? No. I think I if they can just win their like games in hand... They're so susceptible at the yeah, back. They to are, yeah, they like are, Oh, talk to me about Alisson, by the way. Some of the saves, Alisson. Why? He's making oh. more saves than he ever has. Yeah. Incre- against That's Newcastle, down to 10 It wasn't a comfortable 2 0. No, I know it wasn't. Um, the, the, do you know what Alisson has got? Alisson has redefined the, the spread save. Mm-hmm. Do you know why? He has done, he has got, he is down to perfection because. 
traditionally goalkeepers when they come out and spread they kind of it's almost like they do that but then they sort of turn their face and they close their eyes and they just kind of hope it hits them what he does he he kind of reads where the ball is and where they're going to be striking it he goes down on like one knee almost doesn't he and then he'll keep his arms there but he's looking right at the ball so he can react he at the same his time square, doesn't his he? shoulder square, square big surface area he is so good at I'll doing what it, his timing is perf- perfection perfection yeah like, like really good doesn't rush in down the line and then yeah. he's like holding and he's, very he's probably their player of the year. I mean, I've not yeah, watched Liverpool as much, but at the start of the season, yeah. remember they went to Forest and Forest won 1-0. Mm. And he, he was man of the match by a long way. Mm. So it'd be interesting what Liverpool fans think about that. He's pro- arguably their player of the year, which says a lot yeah. about that defence. I love this goalie love, lads. This is world class. Uh, <laughs> all right, lads, let's take it to uh, Everton versus Leeds. By the way, in a minute, we're going to be doing uh, mystery shirts again, uh, mystery retro shirts. We're going to come on to this. I love this bad boy, by the way. Uh, Everton Leeds, though, talk to me. Uh, Neil, did Seamus Coleman mean this goal? I think he probably did. Yeah. I think he's because of how quick the ball's going and all he can do is like hook it across. For me, Melier can't take that position because it's going to be so difficult for Coleman to actually cut it back when the ball's going at that speed. Mm. I think you've got to protect the goal more in the space when and Melier's been consistent, you know. I really like him yeah, for a too. young kid, like he's been fantastic. And I think he'll learn from that because first and foremost, you know it's like protect the goal. Yeah. Protect the goal, especially when the ball's heading, like it looks like it's going to go out of play. He's going to struggle to cut that. He's just going to lash it. He's going to lash at it. So, first and foremost, protect the goal and be safe. And then, you know, like I just didn't think he was ever going to be able to cut that ball back. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think he meant that? um, I actually do think he meant it. Yeah. I, I watched it a few times, like everybody, and I think that it's almost. It's a bit like the Ronaldinho free kick, isn't it, against England yeah, back yeah, in the yeah. World Cup? And I think he did mean it because I think there's not a lot in the box. The way he, the way he hits it, he either gets it ridiculously wrong. I just think he's I think he's almost aware of maybe the keeper's going to do that. Yeah. But it's interesting because the week before Pickford, I mean, I thought that was a worse mistake. You know, against was, Liverpool yeah. where he yeah. oh, takes that yeah. position like that. So it's just one of those. He's a young keeper, isn't he? But I like goalkeepers that, you know, I've worked with you in the past. I like goalies to just be bold and yeah. protect the space a lot, but you've got to... Use your, use your head a little bit. Yeah, you think. still can't get caught. So before, caught before the show, Tom actually said to me, he said, oh, he said, what about that Coleman goal? A brilliant goal, wasn't it? And I went, well, not Only really. Yeah, there. not really. I said, it's still it's still a mistake, actually. It is. Like, as a, as a goalie, like, yeah. I would, I'd be coming in at half-time or full-time and I'd be going, sorry, lads, it's, yeah, yeah. I messed up there. I shouldn't do that. Because first and foremost, like I say, you have to protect the goal. You can't just let him stick it in there. Um, it was clever by Coleman. But it was clever, yeah. In a ball, you, like you say... It's not like he, I couldn't get anywhere near it. He's put it in the top corner. Exactly, is it, yeah. yeah. Daichi effect, though. Um, second 1 0 win on the bounce at home. Um, I, th- I think that I just think he's what a masterstroke. And you look at Southampton and Leeds who've sacked their managers. And, you know, I think Everton snoozed a bit on Lampard. But yeah. it, it was always Sean Dyche was there for whoever's in trouble, whether yeah. it's West Ham or whatever. And he will keep them up. And what is it? Two wins in a row at home. Yeah. Two clean sheets in a win at home. Um, They'll stay up off their home form. Goodison is a untapped. I mean, I love Goodison Park anyway. I'm oh, so sad when brilliant. it's gone. And he's got brilliant. he's got a, such a great opportunity, Sean Dyche, because yeah. I think that's a brilliant job for him after Burnley and that crowd. And I, I think they'll stay up comfortably. He'll get them, they'll stay up on just pure hard work. Hard work and organisation. Yeah, they're just really organised now. Like you say, hard work. They're at it. They're pressing. They're getting into good shape. I think they've got a hell of a chance. Yeah, there. that Everton atmosphere. I said, I said on a podcast actually a few uh, last year. I said the Everton, the Goodison sort of crowd, the atmosphere when they're against the Everton and the Everton are doing bad, it is like toxic. It is the most toxic, toxic atmosphere, and it it doesn't help Everton one little bit. Yeah. But when they turn it on its head and they yeah. get behind the team and they're roaring and they're mate, that place is so intimidating. Right to go to. You, it? it is so close on yeah. top of you, honestly. Yeah. I just love Goodison Park. Yeah. I absolutely love it. It just reminds me of a kid. It's it's not changed. And proper old is it? There's yeah. car music when they come out. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. It's good. It's a good ground. Daish is brilliant. Like that that organisation that he does is fantastic. Yeah, like, he'll just he knows what he's all about. He knows what your teams are all about, and he just like. Pfft. It's simple, isn't it? Simple yeah. and effective. Run, work yeah. hard, shut people down, Win intensity, one boom, that'll do. Right, lads, it's mystery retro shirt time. Mm-hmm. Um, so last week, okay, Kurt, so you didn't do this last week, but last week I said, anybody, get guess a country, and if you get it, we'll see. Well, anyway, Mark guessed Brazil. It was Sao Paulo. Incredibly, right? So this, this week... What we're going to do is, if any of the guests happen to guess the country, which I don't think you'll ever do again, to be perfectly honest with you, I'll let you keep the shirt, all right? Because you were crying about it a little bit, to be honest with you. So you can keep the shirt if you get it this week, all right? So Kids well, are then, crying. start us off, cuts. Where do you think this shirt is going to be from? What Holland, country? Holland. Oh, the Dutch league, yeah? yeah? What's the Dutch league called? Eredivisie. Go on, what are you saying? France. 
What's the French league called? League one. Une. Farmers League. Une. Yes. <laughs> hey. That's that one. Good I'm gonna go I think we've got a chance here. Yeah. I think it's going to be either one of them. got to be Europe. Can't be South America again. Um, I'm going to go for... Um, I'm going to go for Spain again. I think I went for Spain last week. I'm going to go for the Spanish League. Dutch League. French League. French League. Spanish League. You're all ready for this. Da, 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 da. Oosh. Ooh. What on earth is that? What is that? That's not a shirt. That's a flag, surely. <laughs> oh, my. This it's is... French, isn't it? No, it's not French, actually. Calm yourself down. <laughs> um, the team is called Tigres. Mm. What league are they from, then, Tigres. hey? No, nearly. Tigres. Argentina. No, nearly. Paraguay. Ne- just keep Chile. naming the South American Peru. one. Peru. No. Colombia. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Chile. Um, Everyone in the chat's going to know now. Come on, Ecuador. you lot. No, probably one, one of the biggest ones. Mexico. Yeah, there you go, Mexico. Mexico. Here we go, Tigres. Tigres? Wow. Tigres. North America, then. Oh, look That's at proper, it. isn't it? That, that is nice. What does Does look say? like a Brazil shirt. From yeah. Wit, from Wish. There you go, Tigres. Tigres from the year 1993, this is. 20 years ago they were rocking this bad boy 30 years ago good mass man oh my god oh my god sorry lads yeah there you go Tigres mystery football shirt that's a banger right who, where are we going to next and let's talk about your boys Mark uh, yeah. United Leicester 3-0 comfortable in the end but um, early on Leicester looked decent yeah, I think in the first half, Leicester were the better side, but I think it was a classic example of just because you're the better side doesn't, you don't necessarily deserve to be winning. Yep. Um, Rashford's goal was brilliant, brilliant pass by Bruno, and David Hay made two good saves. So I like that because it's like, yeah, Leicester were the better side, but big players provide the moments to keep the clean sheet and then score the goal. Um, and then second half, he made one change, but changed three players. He basically took Ganacho off, put Sancho 10, Veghorst 9, Rashford to the wing, kept Bruno on the right. And just absolutely dominated yeah. Leicester, which is mad because we played Thursday night in Spain and they've had a week off and 3-0 could have been 5-0 and it was just, you know, it was a little bit boring in, with 20 minutes was, to go because yeah. the game was done and it was, it was straightforward. See what I like, Veghorst's work ethic. Yeah. Oh my God, like, no, no stop, does he? Yeah, it's yeah, like, good, isn't what it? What he's lacking, it makes up in yeah. work. I, I'm like, see, I saw a stat today actually, it said a Veghorst is the third, like from, from pressing and pressure, he's the third highest in the Premier League. He's a funny one because in the fan base, um, he's either loved or yeah. not, not. Not, and I think everyone likes him, but he's very limited. Like he is he's limited, not a very good. Footballer. I think he gets ridiculed a little bit. Do you but know he, what I mean? He's so slow. Like he's so slow over five yards. You know, it's <laughs> like he's, he's like a you know them old larders that you look cars. He's like <laughs> trying to start one of them on a frosty morning. But he's he, you're right. He's pressing from the front, and Ten Hag absolutely loves it. And, Even and when he tracks back and the yeah. tackles yeah, he's making, he does, like yeah. the defending third was was different class. But yeah, the goals. I mean, the goals Man United score were in behind Leicester, weren't they? The high line. Yeah. And, that, yeah, and yeah. Rashford's pace was like, he's just different. Frightening, guys. isn't it? No, yeah. the, what, his movement and the way he times his yeah. runs and then just, just quality finishing. Man. You can tell he's at that point now, Marcus, where he just knows what he's doing. Like He just knows what he's doing. He knows where he needs to be. And when he gets those chances now, whereas in like last season, he might be dragging them, he might be putting them over, he'd be spraying them. Now he's like yeah. pff, drilled. They're going in the corner, aren't That's they? That's why on the angle, again, if you're a goalie, you can't sweep. Yeah, because you know he's going to drill it back across you, and if you sweep and you you you, you don't get anything through the back of the ball, yeah. and it ends up going through you a little. It, it bit. goes in anyway. It goes it? in yeah. anyway. So it's about holding your position and transferring yeah. off your leading leg, or dropping your shape so you can just get onto your leading leg quicker. Something, yeah. You end up sweeping and just the pace kills you. It's hard to find um, po- different new positives about Rashford because we talk about him every week. But one thing I haven't heard is the fact that. As a United fan, he lived offside for two years. He was always offside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you look at the weekend, but it's it's week in, week out. He's he's getting his offsides absolutely spot on. I thought the first one was going to be offside, but FaZe played him on. I think everyone thought the other one was going to be offside because the angle of the yeah. camera was look, making it look... I mean, I can't believe people at home are going, it's offside. Liverpool fans are going, oh, it's corrupt. It's off, It's like, the, we, we haven't got the straight line. They have. I mean, actually, to be fair, last weekend, they probably have yeah, got it wrong. Are, but, yeah. But no, he's, 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 he's obviously worked on that as well. Whether it's Benny McCarthy, Ten Hag, he, he was always offside and now he's right on the limits perfect. and it's perfect. Yeah, damn right. I think, that's, I think that's a Ten Hag thing. I think 
like that just ruins you when you see a player constant and doesn't it how much does it annoy you because when you have a striker who is constantly offside because yeah. it just lets them go all right cool chill let's get yeah. set again and we can build from this here it does kill you so i think he's definitely been working it talk to me about the hay saves our early doors they were good saves weren't they yeah really good yeah. that's what he's good at isn't he yeah. that's what that's one of yeah. his main strengths you know he's a shot stopper and yeah. he's quick around the goal and he's reactive and he does that really well yeah very very good yeah we like david hay he's on fire at the minute give him a new contract by the way yeah yeah he's yeah we agree really. Yeah, got to. I think he's close to sign it, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You've got to do that, and then you're not going to bring a top keeper in. Then are you? You're gonna, you need to bring someone in oh, to work underneath him. I think three hundred grand a week for another three years. Oh please, <laughs> how nice would that be? Oh god. Um, right, anyway, go on. Chelsea, Southampton. Mark, talk to me about it because you watched this game on Saturday, didn't you? On one of your dodgy streams that you always like getting stuff like that. Yeah, you don't go dodgy streams. I promise you, you don't go dodgy streams. Um, but I watched Chelsea, the hi- I watched the highlights. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, talk to me about Chelsea. What are the, what on earth is going on at Chelsea here? You know what? It's really hard because I want Potter to stay. I'm probably the only person in, in, in the UK and in the world who does. But I, I, is this because you like him or because you want Chelsea to keep losing? Goldbridge hot take. Yeah. Get, his, get your stock on on Potter. He's going to turn <laughs> it around. But he's probably not, to be fair. Um, I think that, I think it's such a sad reflection of the the players are not playing for the manager. And yeah. I don't understand why. Because even in the second half, Southampton played well, but the goal was a free kick, isn't it? Ward Prowse. Yeah. It's not... And, and they, they could have had three or four, like Sterling, Havertz, the Mounts. The, no. These are players, they were internationals, they should be scoring, but there's clearly something going wrong there. But I just don't think you can sack a manager when Tuchel got 200 million spent, they sacked him within a month of doing that. Mm. Potter's just had 300 million pounds spent, you'd sack him within a month of that. People are saying get Poch, Mourinho, I'd be like, hold off. Yeah. Get, I'll come in at the end of the season yeah. because I ain't coming in and then two months later the results are crap with these players and I'm getting the sack. I yeah. think they've got to stick with Potter till the end of the season and I know Chelsea fans won't like that, but come on, you, know, it's, it, you can't be sacking a manager a month. Well, it's not even a month after 300 million and they're not that far off. They just exactly. they need a goal scorer. Yeah. But knowing, him, knowing the game as well, and it's like he's not a bad person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's a good guy yeah. and he's a good manager. He's proven he's a good manager. You know, he's done it in the past and he's he's taken Brighton to like unbelievable heights and made them play unbelievable football. So what what's gone wrong there? It's like yeah, the, the players are not gonna play for him because he's an idiot. No. You know what I mean? He's a good guy and he's got he's got good uh, work ethic and he knows what he's doing. He's tactically very good. So I think it, it, I think, think it, it just might be something to do with because um, someone asked me a good question at the weekend. They said, "Would you have took him at Man United if Ten Hag didn't exist?" And I said, "No. I think Villa was the next job for mm. Potter. I think it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I, I always felt fair play Chelsea for taking him. I don't know what it is about Potter, but obviously you two might know. It's um, is do you think it's a respect thing because he managed Brighton and we're Chelsea players? I don't know what it is because, like you say, he's a nice guy. He's a good manager, and I would certainly, as a chairman, or I'd want to give him the time." But for some reason, the players might just be a bunch of sport. Bro. I think uh, he came out in the media this week, didn't he? Kind of saying he's got, he has got this killer instinct. He does get angry, he does get shouty at players and stuff like that. It's just that whenever he does an interview, he just seems so lovely, though, doesn't he? But like, that's the modern game, isn't it? Because players are not, there's more introverted player than extroverted yeah, players these sure. days, and they don't deal well with shouty managers. No, they, don't know. they, they switch don't. off if anything. They're just like nah. But with a manager like Potter, you would have thought they'd buy into because he'd be the type of person to sit him down. And yeah, he's a coach. He's a proper coach. coach. Them, yeah, co- yeah, proper people person. So I think I think the only thing wrong with Chelsea, it, honestly, is it just it just shows the importance of having a top class striker. It does. Yeah, yeah, it just shows the importance of having a top class striker up front. That when they get that chance, they might put it in the back of the net and they can go and win games one 0 Winning games one 0 right? Is it will cover over a whole lot, host of mistakes and miss this and this and that because winning the game is the, the most important thing and they're just not Rashford's putting the ball prime in. Example, exactly yeah. that, yeah. He gets the chance, he scores, boom, everybody forgets but about it. Dortmund on Wednesday in the Champions League, they had more chances. Oh, ridiculous. Chances. They, they battered they're, Dortmund. They've got, they're having the chances. This, yeah. This is the thing that frustrates me about Chelsea fans. You are creating the chances and you are not conceding many, but you're losing games 1-0. There's yeah. a big clue there. Because that happens, isn't it? You know, when you're not scoring, yeah. you're not scoring, you're getting chance after chance and you're not scoring, eventually it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, I want to talk about uh, Forest Man City in a second. Quickly, did you watch the uh, Dortmund game, Chelsea, in the week? Did no. you see the goal? No. Have you seen the goal? So, no. um, I just think Kepa could do a bit better. I do. I just think Kepa can do a bit better. The lad knocks it past Fernandez, sprints into the 18-yard, but he's about sort of 14 yards out on the angle. Um, 
and Kepa just doesn't really commit. He doesn't really go, and he doesn't get t like time it very well. Really Skips really. past him, and I just think he, he. I think he has to go and Muller there. I really do. Um, right, anyway, Forest, Man City. Um, what on earth? How does this happen? Do you know when you play those games of Champ Man, yeah, and you batter a team, and you're you're one nil up, and you score, and you're, you're making chances, you're making chances, you're making chances, and then they score a last minute stinker. That's exactly and what this game was, wasn't such it? City. Like Phil, Phil Foden runs through one on one, <laughs> just. Doesn't know what to do. Haaland as well. I mean, oh. He's six yards out, Haaland. Wow. He never misses them, does he? Wow. Ever? But a great result for the league and a, oh, yeah. and a great result for Arsenal. And um, that's a nailed on. You wouldn't even put put it in a bet. You'd six million, like, the reverse yeah, fixture, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it would have been ridiculous odds, wouldn't it? It'd have been for even for a draw. I bet you it'd have been about four or five to one at least. If Haaland has a bad day, Man City are vulnerable. We keep saying this. If Haaland yeah, do. doesn't score. They don't do enough without Haaland, and he never gets subbed. And they, mm. you know, they just stick with the number nine. And it worked at the Emirates. It didn't work at the City Ground, and mm. that's the thing at the moment. Um, I was watching Soccer Saturday, and Michael Dawson, when that Bernardo Silva goal went in, Michael Dawson doing the comms went. I think the goalie has to do better. I think Kaylor Nava has to do better. Go on. I think he's. I think he's got a good point. Do you? I love this. <laughs> this is what we're here for. He do better. I think if you watch it back, he's yeah. kind of tried to guess a little bit. His yeah. body weight's then gone to one side and I think then the ball only beats him. It's just there, to just, be fair, isn't it? Yeah. I think if he hadn't tried to guess or yeah. tried to gamble and he held his position for longer, a goalie like him would have would yeah. be able to have transferred and pushed. Do you know what he's done? He's done the old um, jump and fling his legs in the air to make it look like, yeah. I've only seen this last second. I have, I've tried so hard as well. I but think I think he'll be even, disappointed because yeah. I think he's gambled. He's gambled early. Yeah, and yeah. so hard to transfer your body weight after you. Exactly that, yeah. I need, I do need to, I'd need to make it very clear though. When we break down goals like this, we're not blaming the goalkeepers. No. Yeah, We're not. We're just saying that this is what you could have done yeah. to give yourself a better chance of saving it. And it's difficult because body's in the way. You don't know what For he can sure, see. Yeah. And so it it's very more difficult to say, oh, should have done better. It's, yeah. it's easy to say that sitting here, but it's... Yeah, I think he'll be disappointed because he did a semi-gamble. Yeah, that's the beauty of a goalkeeper. And I think if you break down any goal that goes in anywhere in the oh, world, yeah. there's always something that you can look at on a goalie's perspective and go, yeah. maybe you could have been there or just this or hand higher or lower or something like that. That's all we're saying. We're not absolutely goalie bashing, I promise you. Um, right, next game, we're going to go for Brighton versus Fulham. Fulham, sixth position in the Premier League. What a season they're having, by the way. And no Mitrovic. Unbelievable. And Brighton like dominate possession as they do. They dominate possession. They have loads of chances. Yeah. They struggle to score yeah. at times, don't they? They're the same as Chelsea. They, they are. are. They're a little like, bit like Chelsea. But Fulham have been outstanding. Phenomenal, haven't outstanding. they? Yeah. I think Brighton's last three goals have been chalked off for offside. Yeah, they right? have. They dominated they? Palace yeah. through, dominated Fulham, lost. Mm. I mean, it's still a brilliant season for Brighton, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, they could have had six from the last two, but Fulham are just. A very good team. That's yeah. what they are. They're it is simple team, as that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They're not too flashy. They're not all singing or dancing, but they just go and get the job done. And that's what I like about them. very good as well. Eh? What, sorry? Defensively very yeah, good. Yeah, but Leno on fire again. He got Leno, it's a great move for him because when right. he first went there, I'm thinking, is that going to be the right move for him? Mm. Like, but... Pff. He's a good goalie, Burn Leno. Just yeah. not maybe not an Arsenal goalie, but he's a good goalie. Yeah. He's a good Premier League goalie, isn't he? Yeah. Um, right, we're going to move on swiftly. Spurs versus West Ham. Mark, talk to me about West Ham because they surely should not be in 18th position in the relegation zone, right? No, I, th I think what well, I think West Ham had a good bit, period of time with Moyes where it looked like they were going to compete with the top six. And I always felt with West Ham though, and I'd be interested in what West Ham fans think when they. They picked up the points, that, but when they did play the Liverpools or the Man Uniteds, you just sit deep and yeah. try and counter. And then they were picking their points up by being a bit more open against the teams from the bottom. This season's so competitive. I think every game he's going a little bit like he did against the big teams. And that's why they're down near the bottom. They're so... He's, he's so defensively rigid. They're not scoring... A good, I mean, Antonio always used to get goals. Mate, Skamaka looked, yeah, looked decent. Sure they're fair. They've got Paqueta. They've got, they've got the players, Declan Rice, but they're just... Uh, I don't think they will go down, but they shouldn't be where they are. No, but it's still, mate, one, as the, as this happens sometimes, mm. though, you know. The games just keep coming. You keep drawing, losing, drawing, yeah. and eventually you go, well, we should be winning, but we're not. So Momentum's a big thing, isn't massive, it? Massive, isn't it? So it doesn't matter who you've got in the team or if momentum's going against you, all of a sudden you're losing games. It's yeah. like, ooh, hang on a sec. 
and it just you got to do something to get something different to click out of that yeah. losing mentality. This is where you start to see players as well that what they're really made of honestly like the, it's, it's one thing being at the top and holding your nerve and holding your bottle to be able to stay at the top but when you're at the bottom and you've got these players on under grand a week and all that that's when you start to see what they're made of are they up for the fight do they want to dig in really deep and you see some characters that definitely don't want to do that step don't backwards and moonwalk out yeah, yeah exactly that moonwalking out I like it um, right a couple more to go Brentford versus Palace um it was a bit of a meh game, really. I think I had this down on my uh, accumulator. No, not accumulator. What was it? Um, pools. Do you remember your pools <laughs> back in the day? I had this down as a score draw, and that's exactly how it played out. I know Brentford scored a late goal, but you could see this happening, couldn't you? Yeah, Palace are sort of in on the beach, I think. They should be all right. Yeah. And then Brentford don't lose. So no, they don't, they, they're, yeah. they're, Again, they're a bit like Fulham and Brighton. They're Brentford. just so good. Good season, though, Brentford. Yeah, really they good season. tough to beat them. Yeah, they are. You know what you're going to get, don't close you? Close again, and it's a yeah. small little stadium. Fans are on top here, and it's a tough place to go. That yeah, probably not is. a bad result for Palace, even though it was a late equaliser. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Do you know what Brentford? I'd love them to see them not really change much about how they do stuff. I don't want them to do get too carried away and be that team that think they can start buying forty million pound players and splashing wages about that. Because I think if they did that, that would be a mistake for them. Genuinely, I think they need to know what they are, realize what they are, and I think they do. And just stay doing what they do. I think it'll go the other way around now. I think people will buy their players. Really? Yeah. It'll become like kind of a Brighton. A Brighton, Tony yeah. Tony might go, the goalie might go because yeah. he's done really well. You know, like a few players might yeah, then yeah, be yeah. like, I think the manager might, be. might go. Oh, exactly yeah, right. the manager might go. Uh, okay, final. And then we got the quiz, lads. Um, I'm buzzing for the quiz today, by the way. I'm on fire. I, actually, I lost last week, didn't I? Damn. Yeah. Uh, Wolves Bournemouth finishing off with an absolute glitz glamour one. Um, Wolves, another team that can't score, by the way. Score. All the possession, All loads the, of yeah, chances, um, and actually playing really well. Well, can't score. Yeah. Kills you. There you what go. result for Bournemouth? Because I've, I've relegated them and they're not even in the bottom three now. No, this is what I mean. This this season, for me, genuinely, has is, is got to be one of the most exciting I, I can remember mm -hmm. from all the way through it. Like, if you look at the bottom seven, eight, nine teams now, even up to Aston Villa, who should be, it should have enough, right? Anybody in there, if you go on a little run now with poor results, losing three or four, you are right in it. You are right in it. I guarantee you, when everybody saw Southampton beating Chelsea 1-0, at Stamford Bridge at the weekend, they're coming in at full time going, oh, come on, what chance have you got? Lads, what chance have we got? It's horrible, isn't it, mate? We've all been there. Um, right, anyway, come on then, it's time for the quiz, the uh, world-famous football fill-in 10-question quiz. Either way, I'm going to come and sit in this uh, centre with you lot. Let's have it, come on. All right then, Jamie, what is it? It is the 60-second head-to-head quiz. It can't be 60 seconds. It's like 10 questions. The, the head-to-head head quiz then, the head-to-head. 1v1v1. Head. Oh, you're not nervous at all, are you? <laughs> I think you're on the spot. How am I going to do this? <laughs> In the mud. Right, come on, let's have it, Jamie. Let's have it. OK, so Zinchenko scored this weekend, but when did Zinchenko score his last Premier League goal? Give me a year. You only get one answer as well. 2021? No. 2020. Nope. 2022. 2015. What? Yeah, his last Premier League goal was in 2015. Oh, I thought he scored yeah. another one than that. Yeah. Wow. Good goal it was. That's shocking. Though. Yeah. How many England caps does Raheem Sterling have for England? The closest wins. So you all get an answer. The closest wins. So it's not quick as first. 72. No, near. 47. He's got 82. So Mark gets the point there. Well, what did you say? Wow. Oh, damn, yeah. I celebrated that. Uh, one nil. Well, you had that many. Wow. What did you say? 40? Well, I went low. It's 47. <laughs> that was really low. <laughs> what did you say? 72. Yeah. Excluding loans, which player had the career path of Manchester City, Burnley, Tottenham, Atletico Madrid, Newcastle? Trippier. Yeah. Trippier. Yeah, that was right. Yeah, I got it first. I love that. He just you can't give it him that. just because it's his shot. <laughs> Jamie, who said that first? It was Jamie, who said that first? Me. I need VAR on that. I think it was Neil. Who, who said that first, Jay? I think it was Neil. We have to give it to Neil. Yes. You're a scumbag. Yes. <laughs> nah, you're well dead done, to me. You are. Well done, guys. It was. No, he, he, well, he, he said shit and you went in. I would have got absolutely ben hammered by these boys. He whispered it. I, I dominated it. Is the difference. He was louder. But Jamie, you you're a scumbag. Oh, mate. Shouts are loudest. Is the one that says. You heard it and you went trippy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, hold on. What's the score? One one nil. Yeah. You got nil. It's a shambles. That's disappointing. Isn't it? Don't know. How many games finish one nil this game week? Three. Nope. Two. Nope. Four. 
four is the correct answer. The, the key is to go last in it. Why are we? <laughs> Unless you get it wrong. Ah, why are we? I get too excited. That's why. <laughs> I was going to say three. Thanks so two one nil. So Nick Pope was the only player to get red carded this this game week, but which manager got a red card too? Oh, that's the hell. I, I don't know. I really don't know this. Good God. I will go with, um, oh, I don't know. Do you want a hint? No, oh. no hints. Lopetegui? Nope. D Deserbi. Deserbi. Oh, oh, look, how will you guess? Somebody's guess. whispered that no, to I you just, then. I, I had this no idea at all. Race. I just thought, what game did I not really watch so. on Match of the Day? <laughs> no, Deserbi got a red card in the tunnel after the game. What was it? Oh, saying no to the referees. Oh, does that count? Yeah. Shambles. Who was the only player to score a brace this game week? Rashford. Correct. What? Mark Goldbridge. <laughs> Can I have a goalkeeper question, please? What? <laughs> okay, that's four. Four, one, one nil. Still can come back. You can't have nil here, mate. You can come back. Which club was Anton Griezmann at before joining Atletico? Real Sociedad. That's good. That's good yeah, that's well, a good. Read, I've read his kids' book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real Sociedad. That's great knowledge, knowledge and quick knowledge. There's a book yeah. for kids, and he played for Sociedad. I thought it had been quite a hard one. That was a good one. Yeah. It's good. So four, one, one. Which club? Uh, no. Who scored Brentford's last minute winner this game week? Mbwema. Nope. No, it wasn't. It was Brentford. Brentford. Uh, Solomon. Nope. No. Oh, who's that? Midfield. That was Fulham. That was Solomon for Fulham. Got, got the midfield the player. Fine. There's got to be a timer. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> for Brentford. Yeah. Five. What do you mean time? The timer. It's got to be a timer. It's got to be a timer. I don't Two, know. It was. One. I don't. One. Go on, need answer. It wasn't. Is it that Jan Ounce or whatever? Yeah, you got it. Up. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it out of the bag. Good one. That's good. good. One. good well, one. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Four, two, so, four, one. Oh, two, my two. God, imagine. There's two questions left as well. Come on, give it to me. Since 2016, who is the only player to score more direct free kicks than James Ward Prowse in the top five European leagues? Messi. Correct. This is such a shit question, that is. That's so bad. That was quick, that as well. That's rubbish, <laughs> mate. Well done, mate. All right, final question. Mark got five, two, one. Oh, Who scored man. the only own goal this game week? Martinez. Yeah, yes. Martinez. He come last. Well uh, no, it's not it's joint. Two, two. Okay, I came second. I came joint second. Yeah, but the guest always has a higher goal. Joint second. God's yeah, sake. That's the quiz this week. Yeah, um, thanks, Jamie. Two really, really enjoyed that. Um, that I can't believe. Get in the comments down below, by the way. If I said that before Neil, then Not get, tell me because Actually, I know it doesn't did. matter. I know <laughs> I did, but oh, yeah, but it got in my head and then set me back for the thing. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. It's football filling. <laughs>